Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Hiram, and I'm the host of these documentaries that cover pertinent issues in Texas and around the country. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about a really important issue, and that is Texas storm preparedness. On February of 2021, Texas faced record low temperatures and record snowfall. That shut down the city for many days and actually left folks without power for weeks. Not having electricity during the time that Texas was facing record low temperatures was absolutely detrimental. Grocery stores were shut down, roads were shut down, and on top of that, folks were left without heat or access to water. Pipes burst around the city, heaters didn't work, which caused many to die from hyperthermia. Guys, you don't understand. It was so nice to use my freaking stove. My freaking stove, guys. I got to use it. After that incident, Texans were left to wonder, what is Texas gonna do to prepare itself for upcoming winter storms? And that takes us to 2023. This year, we again faced a record ice storm. This ice storm caused extensive damage to power lines, to trees, blocked roads. Austin Energy claimed to be prepared by having people on standby, but yet, Again, we saw so many folks, upwards of 700,000 Austin, uh, Austin residents left without power as a result of down power lines and damage caused by the ice storm. Austin Energy says that it wasn't blindsided this time, that it was prepared, but yet again, people faced outages of upwards of 10 plus days. So we're gonna interview the Austin community and see what they think about the issues that Texas has faced regarding storm preparedness. Our first interviewee is your average citizen working remotely, who luckily was able to escape to his parents' house to get access to internet and electricity. But as you'll learn, had it not been for this access, he may have struggled to even just get to work. We talked to a small business that was affected by these outages a manager at a small business here on 6th Street in Austin, Texas, told us about how she was paying over $200 a night out of her own pocket in order to be able to stay in a warm hotel. And finally, our third interviewee just shows us how important it is for Texas to continue to consider these issues regarding Texas storm preparedness. I'm Andy, uh, lived in Austin all my life. Uh, work as a manufacturing engineer for a software company out in LA, so I work remotely. I essentially get up around 9, uh, hop on my computer to just start working, uh, go out for lunch sometimes, and then come back home for the rest of the day. I de basically depend on my Wi-Fi and my power for, for everything here. So back in 2021, I also lost power. Luckily, we had a plan in place. We, the, the, the apartment we were staying at, there, there was a gas stove up at the community center that we were able to use and, and make some food, make some, make some soup to, to be able to eat um, for the next few days. But, because um, there was also no water during that time. Um, and so it just made it very difficult to, to be able to um, get through it. Luckily, we were able to get out um, about after four or five days and, and uh, her, the, the, her, my, my girlfriend's parents, uh, they had power at their place, and so we were able to get out, drive through the snow, and, and, and make it there and, and safely. By the time I lost power, I wasn't able to communicate with anyone. I basically just packed a bag um, with my clothes and a book or something like that, and I drove to my parents' house. They also live in Austin, um, and they had power and everything. There, I explained my boss what was happening. Um, if I wasn't able to go to my parents, I probably would have been in a much bigger uh, uh, heap of trouble, I think, because uh, luckily there was still water. Uh, we didn't use water during this time, but um, there was no heat. I didn't have any way to make food. Um, didn't, we couldn't microwave anything, couldn't use the stove because the stove is electric. Um, so I, I, I didn't really prepare super well for um, anything. I, I, I have like some snacks or whatever, but not anything like sustainable. I'll just start out with, um, my name's Megan Jeck. I'm the manager here at uh, Club 420 ATX. This is our promotional trailer. We're going to be opening up um, a full dispensary and a full bar with bottle service uh, in the building behind us sometime in April. So 
We're just have the trailer here for now. We're excited for, for that event coming up in April. Business-wise, we were shut down um, for two days. We didn't have power, but also, you know, driving conditions were unsafe. Um, so that, you know, loss of income and revenue definitely affected myself, the employees. Um, and then personally, you know, being without those two days of work, you know, definitely puts a financial hardship on you. So I did experience the storm in 2021 and then also the storm uh, in 2020, the year before that. Yeah, so I'm Noah Barus. Uh, I lived in Houston growing up in high school, went out to college in Texas State. Immediately after college, moved to Austin. I've been living out here for about two years now. For the power outage, uh, Tuesday, fine, completely normal. Uh, I typically work from home. I don't go to the office. Um, that entire Wednesday, I had everything fine. Uh, hot water, power, electricity. The only thing I did not have was Wi-Fi. Uh, because Spectrum, I don't know if you saw the video or anything like that, but the night before, so Tuesday night, Wednesday morning at night, they had an entire power outage where the Spectrum main connector was broken off from like everybody that has Spectrum servicing. So everybody that I talked to that I work with that had Spectrum was just completely out for work for two days. So I was out for that power outage and then I ended up getting back into work today, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Um, so luckily I have a really forgiving job where um, if emergencies like this happen, we have floating holidays or like PTO. But for other people like my roommates and stuff that don't work in a job that is quite as forgiving in terms of like giving you extra PTO to take off, um, it really crushed them. Like, cause for that entire day where they were subjected to be inside because of dangerous road conditions and then did not have Wi-Fi that was accessible right away, it took us a day and a half to even get Wi-Fi. So they had to end up waiting till 1 p.m. until their manager ended up telling them you gotta come into the office or you gotta burn PTO that you may or may not have. So it was just one of those things where we were just kind of like at the mercy of like our, our, our internet provider. And um, it really just took like another two days excessive where, um, you know, especially being forced into the office, driving in dangerous road conditions, like not something an employer wants to do, but um, it was something that people were just forced to do. I lost power during the storm, actually. I want to say Wednesday, right when it happened, my internet cut out. I even lost like phone service. I didn't have phone service at all. But mostly the way I felt was, it was just a repeat of like 2021. Like, oh, am I gonna lose water now? Oh, is it gonna be a much worse cold snap than, than it was in 2021 or, or last year even? Um, and so I just, it felt like, uh, uh, it just felt like I was not gonna make it this time or something like that, you know? Yeah, I don't really have trust that the situation um, will, be, will be fixed anytime soon. Um, as far as like my preparation goes, I, I suppose I can prepare better and, and figure out ways to um, have meals that don't have to be heated up in the microwave or something like that, or that I can, I, I really don't like the idea of of having like ready to eat meals, but maybe that is an option like to have, have some protein bars on hand or or have, uh, I, I have bottled water on hand thankfully, but um, other than that, like just maybe buying some, some easy radio things to eat. Um, I think it's important to know that, I think Austin Energy did try to do a little bit of their part. Um, they did try to get crews from other, uh, other cities, other counties um, to be able to help. I, I, saw, on, I saw on Twitter that I guess the, uh, some crews from Houston came in to help out with um, trimming uh, power line, or, or trimming trees and, and uh, um, try, trying to restore power to, to the city. But it definitely affected a lot of individuals. I think about 30% of people didn't have power. Um, and if you go on Austin Energy website, they say, oh, there's 70% of people with power. But that's kind of a little bit misleading that 30% 30% of people don't have power and haven't had power for three or four days already. They haven't had heat for three or four days. Uh, yeah, definitely, I mean, I'm just one person. I don't have all the answers. Um, and I do think that um, ERCOT is not doing their job in winterizing, winterizing the, the, the grid and winterizing everything. 
Um, I do understand there's a, a bunch of money that goes into like uh, bearing power lines and that may be an option for Austin, hopefully sometime soon, but I'm just not sure. No, there's definitely like a breakdown whenever it comes to um, just like what we need as far as you know, the people moving here and the, the stress that that puts on our power grid, especially whenever these crazy ice storms happen. Um, I know steps have been made, but as far as, you know, investing the right amount of resources and finances into keeping, you know, the, the people of Austin safe and warm, uh, that there's definitely been a breakdown uh, with that. So, yeah, I lost power around 3 a.m. Wednesday morning. Uh, currently still do not have power. Um, I'm actually paying well over $200 just to stay in a hotel for the night, um, just to, to, to have a hot bath and a warm bed. So um, definitely a little bit more than an inconvenience. You know, it's a safety, it's a safety concern. And is this money coming out of your Oh pocket? yes, 100% coming out of uh, my pocket, which, you know, going without work for an additional two days, it's, it's putting a financial strain on me. For sure. Absolutely. And you say you still don't have power. I so still don't have power. It yeah. Been? It's been since 3 a.m. Wednesday morning. And it is now? It is now 12.32 uh, Saturday morning. <laughs> wow. So it's been a long three and a half, almost four days. Yeah. And, and do you know of any like other friends or family that have experienced the same thing? Oh, yeah. My, my buddy over here. <laughs> We're actually splitting the, the hotel costs tonight. Because uh, he, he's without power as well still. I feel like resource-wise, they're not putting enough money and time uh, into solving the problem. I feel like they're kind of slapping a Band-Aid on it. Um, and then, well, great, we'll see how this year goes. Um, I feel like the money is being used in Austin in the wrong places. Like, instead of, you know, making sure that our quality of life is is good and the safety concerns are addressed. I feel like they're investing that money into these high rise buildings and, you know, making an, another concrete jungle essentially. Yeah, we do have an Instagram, it's just Club 40 or Club 420 ATX. Um, we have a TikTok page, it's just, yeah, Club 420. I mean, I appreciate y'all doing this documentary and bringing awareness because I know, like, you know, for a lot of locals, it's a big, it's a big concern that, you know, we aren't being listened to. Well, yeah. You, so you got anything you want to add? <laughs> you covered it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I think after two years of experiencing this, um, I'll catch up. Uh, two years of experiencing this, we had the freeze that was like two weeks over, and no power, no electricity, no hot water. Like the Texas power grid needs to understand where it's at right now, because if the Texas grid fails entire state fails and then we are all just sitting ducks waiting for power to come back on we need to understand what we're dealing with because this is not like just once in a decade or just once in every five years like this is happening repeatedly over and over again this happened two years ago it's happening again and it doesn't need to be snowfall it just needs to be a little freeze and then the texas grid shits itself and we need to understand what we're working with here so that way we can prevent it from happening because you have any other state, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, they're all dealing with snowstorms, sleet storms, like full on cold freezes that we don't deal with. And they handle it very, very well. There needs to be something better. I don't have the exact idea for you, but it needs to be fixed because when one part of Texas goes down, the entire part of Texas goes down. I just think like, cause I've been here for about two years. So I was for the first freeze and then for this one, I think the sense of community has grown a little better, which is like, in a way, it helps. Like, um, if, if you have all of your power, but you don't have hot water, you don't have internet, and I have that, like, we can communicate together and hang out at each other's respective houses and get what resources we need. That's what I've noticed from the past freeze from this one. We've gotten better as a community of like, interconnecting with each other and like trying to make it out of this initial freeze versus the first one where everybody was kind of standalone on an island and like feeding for themselves. So I think we need to continue to keep that up as a community of Austin and just stay strong. Like uh, these changes will happen over time. Um, it's just going to be one of those things we got to keep pressing.
Thank you so much for joining us. We're putting these important issues on the table because we hope that you, along with legislators and policymakers, are positively impacted when it comes to making decisions that affect the entire community. We're gonna to continue to remain independent as we create these documentaries. So make sure that you go into that comment section, share your own experience, give it a like, and share with your friends so that we can be sure that there's a direct line of communication between our community and our government. We'll see you next time.